everyone. Welcome to our Saturday 5 p.m. service. Can I invite you to stand up on your feet? Okay, help me turn your neighbours on your right and left and tell them I'm so happy to see you here today. Now I know that this week might be a challenging, difficult week for some of you here in this place. But the fact that you make time to be here in the house of God, I know that you'll encounter God in a powerful and a personal way because our Lord has made all things new. Today is a day that we can rejoice and be glad in it. That's right, let's give Jesus the highest praise. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh church, that's right, we are new creation made in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's come alive and rejoice with me! Man. You ready? And one, two, and one, two, three, jump! Woohoo! So I'm 
Jesus, for he's worthy. He deserves our praise. Amen. Come on. Let's sing it together. Sing it louder, God is with us. We're surrounded by his goodness. Sing it louder if you found grace. As you walk into a new day, in the valley or the victory, no, he's never gonna leave me. Sing it louder through the failure. Aren't you glad we've got a Savior? Nothing's gonna stop us. Sing your praise. Nothing in the world will stand. 
today in worship come and do whatever you want to do and have your way in us that's so right church open up your hearts to the Lord reach out to
There's a fear of the future. There's a fear. But in the presence of our beloved, everything changes. In the presence of our beloved church, everything changes. Just a glimpse of his face. And everything else deems in comparison to who he is. That's right, would you live up 
your song to him, your beloved. your hearts, lift up your hands to Him. Reach out to Jesus tonight. We bless you, we worship you. We praise your holy name, oh God. You are so good all the time. And all the time you are good. Hallelujah. Lord, you say in Psalms 27. And that's the cry of our hearts. One thing we desire, to come before the Lord 
and to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One thing we desire, to gaze you in the beauty of your holiness, to worship you. Lord, we want the touch of heaven. We want to tell you, Lord, that it's deep calling unto deep. Father, we thank you for being here today, for giving us an open heaven. We thank you, Lord, for raising up City Harvest Church. We thank you for giving us a wonderful spiritual family. Hallelujah, we praise you. Go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Come on, why don't we sing it one more time? I worship you. Worship you. clap right now hallelujah Woo. thank you Jesus wow praise the Lord just give the Lord a big hand amen you know I didn't know you're gonna sing this song as a tag I was just thinking about this song standing there because it's very meaningful for, for those of us that grew up in our church it's kind of like the first worship song we sang yeah what a presence of the Lord here tonight. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. If you are, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is good? All the time? Come on, give the Lord a big clap one more time. Somebody shout, woo! Amen. Will you bless somebody on your left and right and say something good is going to happen to you tonight? Man, I want son to come up to the stage right now and just join me for a moment. At City Harvest Church, we want to welcome all our new friends. After the service, don't be in a hurry to leave. We want to invite you to our VIP lounge at Hall 605. We have free complimentary coffee, handcrafted coffee, and our friendly greeters will also be there to connect with you. Will you just turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, thank you for coming to church. Amen, amen. You know, I'm very happy today that we are able to praise and worship God. I, was, I mean, it's good to come to the presence of the Lord, but I'm just filled with joy. Son, I'm filled with joy today. You know why? You know why, right? Because tomorrow, we are exactly 34 years old as a church. Yeah. This is our birthday, you know. This is our church's birthday. We started in 1989 on May the 7th just a very, very small group of us. I was the oldest. I was 25 years old. Son was 19 years old. And, and the average age was 16 and 17. We gathered together in a small little classroom at Peace Center. And we just worshiped God. We sang this song, I worship you, almighty God. We, have, we never dreamed that God would give us such a wonderful ministry, a great spiritual family. Never dream that one day, just a stone's throw away, <laughs> that God will give us Sunday Convention Center. So, happy birthday, City Harvest Church. Happy birthday! I mean, we are not even dating back then. We are not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, right? And uh, Sam was one of the few, uh, she's the first staff, first pastoral staff. And then we have... Uh, Sharon Lee, Lee Loy Lin, my first secretary. Pastor Aris was just a naughty little boy. <laughs> trying very hard to get him to come to church. He loves badminton. Badminton, he loves badminton more than Bible study. Then, then. Then, yeah, and Pastor Bob came from such a rich family. He's the richest among us, you know, and uh, his, his dad and him, would, his dad would take him to country clubs. And all of us eat at Hawker Centre. Let's all stand up right now. Call of G. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to City Harvest Church. Happy birthday to Turn your neighbors. God is Remain standing. I want you to turn to your neighbors, to at least two or three people. Don't, don't sit down, I'm going to do something. You know, pastor is always up to something, right? So I want you to tell each other what year you joined our church. What year you came to our first service? 2005, Okay, okay guys, just hang on for a moment. How many of you were with Sun and I in 1989, put up your hands. Okay, all those, you know what? All those that, that were with me in 1989, church, these are the heroes, the pioneers of our church. Wait, 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 don't clap yet, don't clap yet, don't clap yet. I was just looking at Ryan, where's Ryan? Don't, come, come, all the singers, why y'all scared of me? Just come, come near me. Yeah, Ryan, you grew up in our church, right? How old were you when you first came? Primary four. Ten years old. Yeah. It, yeah, ten years old. If it's not for these pioneers that I'm going to ask to come to the stage, you will not be here. So all those 1989, can you just come out to the stage right now? Wherever you are, all the way at the back. All those 1989, a small group of us. Just come, 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 come. Just come, come, come. Wherever you are. <laughs> all those from 1989. Amen, amen, amen. Just come, 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 come. Bernie! <laughs> Sri Link, who else? Who else? Come on, please give them a big hand. Uh, brothers and sisters. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, we gotta sing this song. Let's sing this song first while they are coming, alright? Our brothers, we share the same calling. I need you to lead on. If I should stop falling, with words of forgiveness, then you and restore me. Praise God. Just hang on for a moment. Can we just put on, on the screen all the old photos? Okay, can, uh, I, I saw Serena and Sun. Can you look, look, look? Why don't you just stand there? Just stand there. Ah, there's a photo. There's a photo. You must go further, 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 further. Ah, there's a Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff, can you see? This is Jeff. 
come, 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 stand here, stand here. Guys, why don't you sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You see, put, put your hands, put your hands like that, put your hands. Yeah, there? That's him, that's him. No, no, this side. The guy with the watch. That's Jeff, that's Jeff. That's Jeff. That's Jeff. That's Chong, right? Wait, oh, Chong is there? Yeah. Pastor Ming. Pastor Ming, can you see Pastor Ming? Pastor Ming, Pastor Ming. Do we have a picture of Tianan? Tianan, we don't have a picture of Tianan. Somewhere there, somewhere there, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Church, these are, these are the super pioneers of our church, yeah. All of them paid the price to build city. They sacrificed, they sacrificed their whole life. They sacrificed their whole life. We can never thank you enough. Sun, you want to say something? I just want to say that when I entered the hall just now, uh, before I entered the hall, I met Ming Hao at the loading bay. And the way he greeted me is as if I'm a newcomer, right? Like, full of love. And then I came in, and everyone that helped me, from Pastor Audrey to Pastor Tuang to Pastor Aris to Sandy to Pastor Bob, and said, I miss you, you know? I just feel like, this is a great family. Yeah. After so many years, we yeah. are still loving each yeah. other. Aren't you glad that we are in this family? Yeah. Thank you for building this hoping, family. I was hoping God let Karen Yao be here. Let Karen Yao. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so important. If there's no Karen Yao, I don't think there'll be a City Harvest Church. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was hoping Adeline will be here. And I see Adeline right now. If there's no Tianan, there will be. Our Easter will not be the same. Jesus is there by the Spirit, but it will not be the same. And then look, look, look. Gwenny. Look at Granny. Granny, our basis. Look at Granny. Look at Granny. She's, uh, yeah, look at this, this Granny. Our She's our first basis in church. She's our first basis. Yeah. Auntie Shirley was our first, first adult. adult. Yeah. I was, I was the second oldest. I was 25. And she was 26. Yeah. <laughs> and we had our first adult cell group in our home. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we all stand on our feet right now? You know, that this, there's one song that uh, we always sing from the very beginning. So, guys, y'all got all the mics, right? Well, well girls. Yeah, the singers are all here. Singers, yeah. 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 Can, can I have your mics? Can I have your mics? Oh. Can I have your mics? Have my... Karen Yao. You gotta take a mic and help us sing. Carry out a singer. Serena, Serena. Serena, you're all. Yeah. Pastor Aris is Pastor singer. Aris was a song leader. Yeah, yeah Pastor Aris was a song leader. Bo, I was hoping you're here, Bo. Shall we all stand up? Okay. Uh, what key were we saying? I, I worship you, Almighty God. G. Was that a G just now? Guys, y'all can take five steps forward. Five steps forward. Come on, come. Five steps forward. Five steps forward. Okay. This is how it used to sound like. Let the old guys teach you how to song lead. Right? How to worship God. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Can, can we all hear? Y'all want to test the mic? Test the mic? Test the mic? Test. They need the monitors. Test, test, test. They need monitors. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Check, check, on. Check, 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 Connie, Connie, Connie! Yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. Okay, everybody. Guitar. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. Everyone worship Him. I worship you. Praise and Lord, I live just 
just to give you praise. Revive me now as your Please give to me a heart that's yours. For I desire to be whole. Your Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Guys, just like yesterday, huh? still as good. The song is still as good. The love for Jesus is still as passionate. What a privilege to serve God together with you. We started with 20 people. You know, I think tomorrow there's nobody already. <laughs> On the actual day, I think everyone is here. <laughs> everyone that started, almost. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's let's spend more time together. Let's hang out. Let's travel together. Yeah. I mean we're all going to retire soon. Let's let's play chess together. <laughs> play my job. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no money, no money. No money. <laughs> yeah. After this I want to counsel I want to talk to you. <laughs> Carrie Yao, she's, she's the smartest among us. She's super, super smart. You know, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. 
I think we, we still have a service to go. Next year is our 35th anniversary. We're going to have a big celebration. But just, I think church, we, we owe them a big, big thank you. So one more time, give all the founders of the church. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Okay, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I think we, we can go back and try the service. <laughs> Auntie. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you. Someone help, Auntie. Son, you help, Auntie. Please be seated, Pastor Ming. Pastor Ming, to, tonight. You doing okay? Yeah, Pastor, okay, okay, okay. You're strong and healthy now. Uh, getting there, not there getting yet. Getting there. there. How many kilos you lost already? Huh? No, Pastor, I've won. <laughs> no, no, but you look amazing. <laughs> no, I, no, Pastor, I've won. I'm heavier than you now. No, Pastor, I'm heavier I, than you. Okay, let's not compare, but we are just happy <laughs> that you're okay. You, and uh, we're still praying for Pastor Kim Hock. Yes. Kim Hock is also Amen. one of our founders. You know, tonight we're going to pray for him as well. Yes. Pastor Meng, please lead us in Holy Communion. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come, let us uh, declare together the Apostles' Creed starting right now on the LED board. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive others who have sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's give God a big hand. Amen. The communion bread and the cup is on your chair. If you take it up and take out the bread, take out the wafer. And I want you to look at this picture at the back of you. At the back, I mean in the front of you. At the back of me. This is the famous picture by Da Vinci on the Last Supper. And you know, you, Jesus declared that He was to go to the cross. He declared who was the a uh, guy that was supposed to betray him, Judas. I mean, not Judas, just declared. And all the disciples were in a turmoil. They were wondering who's the betrayer. So if you look at the picture, all of them went in their groups and started talking around. It is like our world today. When we came in the service, many of us came with challenges. Many of us came maybe confused, feel betrayed, feel things are not going our way. And we're wondering what's happened. But I want you to focus on one person in this picture. And his name is our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the God Almighty, Jesus Christ Himself. No matter what we go through, Jesus is always at the center of it all. No matter how challenging, even you know who is going to betray you, even when you know you need to go through the most challenging time of your life, suffer and even die, Jesus is always there. So as we partake communion today, we remember in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, the bread and the cup. Let us close our eyes right now and I want you to visualize our Prince of Peace, loving Jesus, in the midst of the storm of our lives. And I want you to remember the communion or the Last Supper was instituted to commemorate the freedom from bondage 
from Egypt. And that's when they went into the promised land. So right now, let our Lord and Saviour speak the very words to you. It is finished. Everything that we need, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, the love is given to us. So we thank you, Lord, for the bread that was broken for us, that signifies healing. We thank you for the cup that speaks of the forgiveness of sins and how you love us. As we do this, we remember you once again. You are the centre of it all. And everybody said, let's partake of the bread. And the cup. And once you've done that, turn to your neighbour on your left and right. Tell them, Jesus is in the centre of your life. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful presence of God here in this place. We have worshipped God with our songs. Right now, we want to worship God with our offering. Are you still happy this evening, 5 p.m. service? Amen. Now, when we give to the Lord, it is so important once again to remember, or rather it is important for us when we give to the Lord with the right motives. Now, we see in the Bible very often that Jesus, He rebuked those who gave with wrong motives. So that is why we need to carefully consider and align our motives according to God's purposes when it comes to giving our offerings to Him. But first, we must understand that everything that we have first comes from God and belongs to the Lord. Even the very act of giving in itself is a gift from God and of God because what we're giving to Him is already a part of what He has already given to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, let me read to you. It says, But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in a love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Now, when we read this verse, we say, yes, we want to excel in faith. Yes, we want to excel in speech, in knowledge, in love. But the Bible says that we are also to excel in giving. So our motivation to give is not just wanting the blessings, but to excel in this area of giving by remembering what Jesus has done for us and all the blessings He has given to us and thus we are giving back to Him out of gratitude and love. And this is the great standard for giving. It is one that we can never match. That's why we often say that truly we can never outgive God. Now recently, one of my cell group leaders, Justine Chu, she shared with me a very, very heartwarming, sto not story, testimonies in a cell group. And when I heard of it, I was really very blessed. She shared with me that her cell group, E558, went through a transition from youths to young adult cell group. So many of these young adults are trying to navigate and balance between career and ministry. So, but despite the busyness of life, the members in the group, they rose to the occasion. They stepped out of their comfort zones. They took up multiple cell group ministry roles, serve the Lord, love the Lord, worship the Lord, give to the Lord in their tithes and in their offerings, their devotion and everything to the Lord. And then she started to say, and I started to receive a breakthrough in the cell group. So listen to this. She said, since late last year till now, four members, namely Quinton, Ryan, Sherwin, and Jeff, four of them, they were promoted to become managers in their workplace. Another member, Faye, moved on to a new job with a 60% increment when she actually only asked for 40% increment. Another member, Hazel, also got promoted to a new position and the company actually lowered the requirement just so she could take up the role, making her probably the only one in her company to have the role without being a degree graduate. 
So when she was sharing with me, she was just saying how good God is. That as the members gather together and when they give their time and their resources to the Lord, not only just wanting to have a blessings from God, but because they truly love the Lord, truly are devoted to the Lord. And you see how God actually bless the members back. So we know, we built God's house, He builds our house. We heard of testimonies like that and we get very encouraged. But we also know, and we do hear of those who have given and have yet to receive their breakthroughs and their miracles. That is why City Harvest Church is so important that when we give to God, our motives must be right. We excel in our giving, not only just because we can see the blessings, which we know that when we give, God will bless us, but even when we have yet to see, we still love the Lord and we still continue to give to the Lord with whatever we have out of our gratitude from our heart. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. So on the screen, you can see the various modes of giving right now. You may give by cash, credit card, or check make payable to City Harvest Church. Or right now, you can scan the QR code on the screen or on the seats in front of you using the PayNow apps. And our offering envelopes are also available in the seats, pockets in front of you or under your chair if you're seated at the first row of each section. Are we ready to give to the Lord right now? Shall we just pray? Father, we just want to thank you for your presence here this evening. We know that you are here, you are with us and you are for us. Thank you for City Harvest Church. The Lord, you have seen in every single one of us that we love you and our devotion to you in areas of finances, time, our youth, talents, our family. We always put you first. And Lord, we pray that we will never lose this. And right now, as we give to you, Lord, we want to give to you, remembering all the blessings you have given to us. And whatever breakthroughs that we are still praying for, Lord, we will trust you, we believe you, because we know you are a good God. We love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. And as the ushers right now start passing the offering buckets, down each row. If you're giving by cash, please put your offering envelope into the bucket. And those of you who are watching us online, thank you so much for tuning in week after week. Do join us in this giving as well. How many of you still love Jesus from the bottom of your heart? Happy birthday, City Harvest. Why don't you turn to your neighbour and say, I'm so glad you are part of my church family. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Audrey. I'm so glad you are part of my church family, Pastor. Hi church, I'm here to give you the announcement. I have four announcements. The first announcement is for our couples who are expecting or planning for a baby. City Families is having its Pregnancy 101 workshop. Wow. It's held over two Wednesdays on the 17th and the 31st of May via Zoom. That's the good news, okay? It will cover tips for parenthood, how to deal with the season of change and stay connected to church. Now, first time parents-to-be, we strongly encourage you to join us. To sign up, please simply go to www.chc.org.sg slash cfam. The second announcement, church, I'm here to tell you that because of all our prayers, Professor Doug Peterson has been getting better. I'm here to announce that he's coming back to City Harvest Church on the 20th and 21st of May in two weeks' time. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Really, when we pray... There's truly power in agreement, I mean. So uh, we are very blessed by his preaching last year. And for those who have not heard of him, share the word. I tell you, you are in for a treat. He's really prof level, okay? Professor, professor kind of. Okay, the next one uh, is for Emerge Youth. Can you make some noise? Wow, that's a lot. All the front row, all Emerge Youth, solid. Okay, that's right. Okay, Emerge service is happening on the 21st of May, Sunday, 3.30 p.m. next door at Hall 606 Theatre. Be sure to chew the word on the Lord's Prayer and catch up on your Bible reading of the four Gospels because a very amazing gift awaits you. So what are the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke and Paul. Eh, Testing you, John. uh, Okay, I'm also part of it. Hallelujah. So please, reading the word of God helps us grow in Him. Amen. So turn to an image, you look at them eyeball and say, get ready to be lit. 
Wow, wow. See, all the adults turn to them, don't know how to say this, right? It's okay. <laughs> I'm in your same category. Okay, last announcement, last announcement. Mother's Day, okay? Gentle reminder, next weekend is Mother's Day. Do something nice for your mother. Invite her for service because we have a very special gift for all our moms during the service. And that's all I have for you. Please put your hands together and let's welcome my senior pastor, Pastor Kong. <laughs> Sound like... Sound like intro for Coffee with Kong. Hey, Ben, so glad to be on the show again. Hallelujah. My coffee is piping hot today, you know. And what cup are you drinking today uh, from? Yes, black coffee, Pastor. Black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Frankie is sitting right behind. He was with us from the very beginning, you know, and he was too shy to stand up. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to thank all of you. Ah, my heart is so full. I feel like we can go home already. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you for this wonderful church. I thank you, Lord, for City Harvest Church. Thank you for every single member, not just the pioneers, but those that join us in those early days, and then in Hollywood, and then at Jurong West, and then at Singapore Expo, and those that join us here at Suntec, even in the midst of the trial. And Lord, we just thank you that your future for us is always great. You have a hope and a future. And we, what a privilege it is to just be a part of the great things you are doing. We give you praise, bless the word in Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Last week over the Labor Day long weekend, we brought almost 700 young adults for a retreat at JB. It's possibly one of the best retreats ever. The Lord visited us in a very, very powerful way. Every day, we just wept and wept and wept. And just when we thought we have no more tears to cry. We don't know where it comes from, another torrent of tears. There was an overflowing and outpouring of love. After every session, our young adults didn't want to go back to their rooms. They stayed for fellowship, to linger, to encourage, and pray for each other. On, on the very last session, in the last session, the last day, 700 of us served each other Holy Communion and wash each other's feet. This is the biggest feet washing <laughs> service we ever had. God's love simply melted our hearts. Now, following the Young Adult Retreat, we held our first ever THN Malaysia Conference in Penang. Nine Harvest Churches from East and West Malaysia came together. More than 100 members from our own Chinese church went. Pastor Bob and Pastor Aizen preached powerfully. Again, there was an outpouring of love and unity. Our Chinese church members were truly amazing. On their own accord, they came very early every service to pray for revival in Malaysia. It impacted the locals in such a big way because you guys are our guests and you're coming here, they would go one hour before the service to pray for revival in Malaysia. After the conference ended, we had a day to tour around Penang and even enjoyed Duran together. So will you please just turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, please join our retreats and conferences. <laughs> yeah, amen. We all go through dark seasons in our lives and we experience things we don't understand. Very often, we don't understand why bad things happen and we feel overwhelmed. And we just want to give up and quit. Times when we feel helpless and so hopeless. You have a health challenge, an illness, a disability, a chronic pain, or a mental health issue that's is incredibly difficult to cope with. You have been faithfully working in a company for 20 years, and all of a sudden, it is downsizing and you get retrenched. You don't have enough savings, and there are a lot of unexpected expenses. You have loans to service, and the burden is perpetual, and you feel anxious, and you are fearful. Or the person you love and been dating for eight years just walk out of you, just like that. Or your marriage is breaking up, and you feel angry and hurt and betrayed. Or perhaps you're coping with the loss of a loved one, and the grief is so painful and unending. Or maybe you're heartbroken about something that's happening in your child's life. Or maybe your dream has been shattered and the future looks so gloomy. The list just goes on and on and on. When we go through dark times, 
we don't understand why is it that some are short-lived and others are so prolonged. They just go on for year after year after year. And we don't understand why God doesn't just deliver us out of those seasons instantly. But there is a way for us to respond. And God has given us truths from His Word through which we are to live by in any circumstance of life. And as a Christian, you must learn to walk through those dark seasons. David says in Psalms 23, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. Now, to walk through darkness is to persevere victoriously through times of difficulty, hardship, and pain. Tonight, I want you to go with me to Genesis 37 because we can learn so much from the life of Joseph. There are 50 chapters in the book of Genesis, and one quarter of them are all about his life. So the Holy Spirit put his story in the Bible for a reason. If you are walking through a long season of darkness, the story of Joseph will greatly encourage you. So can we look in the Bible and let's look at Genesis 37 verse 1. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. So Jacob was a chosen servant of God. He inherited the promise given to his grandfather Abraham and to his dad Isaac. Look at verse 2. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17. So Joseph was just a youth, 17 years old. And he was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And they brought their father, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So Joseph saw his brothers misbehaving in their jobs and not looking after the sheep properly. And he went to report to his dad all the bad things his own brothers are doing. <laughs> of course, they became very angry with him. They saw him as a tattletale, a blabber mouth. Look at verse 3. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. Now, Israel was Jacob's other name because he had been born to him in his own old age, and he made an honored robe for him. So Joseph was given a special robe of many colors. There's even a musical base on this story, Joseph and his Technicolor coat, a dream coat. Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat, that's right. Some of you have watched it. I saw it years ago with son, at the Old Kalang Theatre, Donny Osman played the role of Joseph. Such a rope was very expensive and a clear evidence that Jacob showed favoritism, which only exacerbated his brother's resentment towards him. Look at verse 4. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So the 11 brothers really detested him. Now, Joseph was having these dreams. One dream was about bundles of grain. Suddenly, Joseph's grain grew big and tall and stood straight up, high above all the rest. And all the other bundles representing his brothers, they gathered around him and bowed very low to him. <laughs> so Joseph whose EQ was very bad, <laughs> said to them, hey guys, you know, one day you all bow down to me. <laughs> Woohoo! So good, right? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> he had a cheek to say something like that. This only made them angrier with him. Another time, you look at verse, look at verse uh, 9. He had another dream. And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. This time, the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Now, even his dad and his mom, 
<laughs> represented by the sun and the moon, and the 11 stars, his 11 brothers, they were all bowing down to him. Boy, this really drove the brothers up the wall. What a prideful little kid. How arrogant and egoistic is he? One day, their father sent Joseph to, to check on the brothers. Look at verse 18. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. So they were so angry, they wanted him dead. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him. And throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes out of his dream. But Reuben the oldest and Judah the most important son, remember Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah? Yeah, they both disagreed with the rest. Reuben convinced the brothers to throw Joseph into a pit. And Jude, uh, Reuben convinced the brothers, and Judah said, look, he's our brother. We mustn't kill him. Here comes a caravan. Let's just sell him away. The rest said, okay, we won't kill him, but we will sell him away. They sold him to a trader of a caravan going to Egypt. Now, in Egypt, Joseph was stripped naked and paraded at the slave market. He was bought by Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard. Joseph worked as a slave in Potiphar's household for 10 years. As a slave, 10 years. But he was very hardworking, had a spear of excellence, and most of all, very trustworthy, totally dependable. Guys, if you want promotion, these are the attributes you need to have. Diligence, excellence, integrity. Everybody say out loud with me. Say, I need, I need. diligence, diligence. louder say, excellence, excellence. Integrity. integrity. Joseph always exceeded his JD, his job description. So Potiphar liked him very much, promoted him to be his chief of staff, meaning in his household, Joseph was second in command. He was number two. Here was a Hebrew slave, very capable, but also very handsome, very attractive inside and outside. So much so that Potiphar's wife became infatuated with him and lasted after him. So she tried to seduce him, but Joseph refused her advances. She became so angry that she falsely accused him of rape, that Joseph tried to forcibly have sex with her. Of course, Joseph didn't do it. But Potiphar believed his wife and threw Joseph into prison. He was in jail for the next three to four years. But in prison, he maintained his great attitude. Attitude of what? Diligence, excellence, integrity. Turn to your neighbors on your left and on your right. Say, you need diligence, excellence, integrity. Yeah, left and right, okay? Now, let us now all read together. I want you to read together Genesis 39 and verse 22. Let's all read together starting now. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. In other words, in prison. He soon go up, 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 and became second in command to the prison warden. Now, there were two fellow prisoners inside the jail. One was a chief cup bearer of Pharaoh. The other, the chief baker in the palace. Both men had dreams that troubled them. Joseph could see their distress. The Holy Spirit came upon Joseph and he interpreted the dreams for them. And he was very accurate. He told the chief cup bearer, he's gonna be released and be restored to his position in three days. And within three days, it happened. He told the chief baker, in three days, you'll be executed. In three days, he died. <laughs> 
when the cup bearer was about to be released, Joseph asked him, please, remember me when you go back to your position, when you see Pharaoh. Ask him to release me. Tell him I'm innocent. But once the, the cup bearer was restored back to his position, he forgot all about Joseph. Typical, right? Out of sight, out of mind. But one day, Pharaoh had a couple of dreams that no one could interpret his dreams. He became very disturbed by it. Someone told him about Joseph in prison. So he summoned him to the palace. The Holy Spirit came upon Joseph again. He explained the dream very clearly and very accurately. Pharaoh was so impacted. He had never seen anyone so capable and with so much wisdom. He released Joseph immediately and promoted him to be second in command. Imagine from the promise to the pit, to Pharaoh's house, to prison, and finally to the palace. But it was 14 long years of never ending hardship and shame and suffering. You may think, ah, 14 years is nothing. But in those days, the average lifespan was only up to 40 years. So a large portion of Joseph's, oh, Joseph's, <laughs> of Joseph's life was already gone. It was not at all easy for him. He's now 30 years old. Average lifespan, he's left with 10 more years. So, were they wasted years? Wasted years going through sufferings? To God, not at all. In God's plan, the sufferings were absolutely necessary. And the Bible explains to us why. How did Joseph walk through the darkness? How did he keep that spirit of victory inside of him when everything was so difficult and painful and unfair? There are four very valuable lessons that we can learn from his story. Number one, God is always with us in our dark times. This is the most fundamental truth. When his brothers were plotting to kill him, God was with him. In fact, God protected his life. Reuben said, hey, don't kill him. Just throw him into the pit. Then Judah said, instead of killing him, let's just sell him to traders of the caravan. Even as a lowly slave in Egypt, God was with him. Let's read together. And the words in bold, I want you to read together three times louder. Genesis 39, verses 2 to verse 4. Okay, verse 2, starting now. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. This was how he became second in command in Potiphar's house. Joseph found favor and was put in charge of Potiphar's home and everything he owned. When he was falsely accused and, and unfairly incarcerated, let's read verse 21 to 23 together now. Words in bold, three times as loud, starting now, verse 21. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him, and he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Whenever you go through difficult times, especially in a very long and dark season, 
Just as God was with Joseph, he will be with you. Turn to your neighbors and say, God is with you. Jesus promises us in the last verse of Matthew 28, surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Hebrews 13 verse five, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, right? Psalms 139 in the word of God, it says in verse seven, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And the answer is nowhere. Then in verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. In other words, there is no darkness that can swallow you up until God cannot see you. When you walk through the dark seasons in your life, God sees everything and every bit of it. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Come on, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big clap. God is with you. God is always with you. Every painful situation, every traumatic event, every nook and cranny of it, every twist and turn, no matter how dark, no matter who caused it, no matter the source, the fundamental truth never changes. God is with you in the darkness because you belong to Jesus and the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside you. Nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. One more time, turn to the person on your left and right and say, God is always with you in the darkness. Yes. Okay, the second lesson we can learn from Joseph is this. God has a purpose of allowing dark times in our lives. But pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But God does. He loves you. And he has a very specific purpose for allowing the darkness that you're facing. For Joseph, God was changing him. And God was preparing him to be the savior of his generation because a very severe famine was coming to Egypt. Millions of people were going to die. Not just in Egypt, but in all the surrounding nations. The people needed a steady hand to lead them through the worst catastrophe of the century, and Joseph will be the man. God was preparing him to be the savior of a whole civilization. If there was no Joseph, Egypt would be wiped off the map. But even more than that, he would become the savior of his own family. And this family was very important because it carried the promise to be the blessing to the whole world, to stop God's promise from coming to pass. Satan worked very hard to bring strife and division among them, to make them fight and hate one another. Friends, the devil's chief aim is to cool the love and mutual affection we have for one another, to make us envious, jealous of each other, resentful of each other. Jesus himself says, a house divided shall not stand. A family divided shall not stand. God wanted to use Joseph to save his own family by bringing love and reconciliation and preserving the lineage that will ultimately bring forth the Messiah. So what appeared to be an evil act on the part of his brothers, an evil act on the part of Potiphar's wife, was turned into an act of salvation by God. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand, hallelujah. <laughs> Friends, God didn't cause the suffering, but he allowed it. And God himself personally joined Joseph in his suffering. He was there, and he turned every 
evil into a divine purpose. Most of all, it was to draw Joseph closer to he himself and to change him into God's image and likeness. For Joseph, he learned how to appreciate his family more. Look, he was spoiled by his dad. He was shown a lot of favoritism. He took advantage of that. He was bratty, smart alecky. Know anyone like that? Rude, insensitive, disrespectful, very hurtful to his brothers. After 14 years of slavery and prison, Joseph's own experiences of suffering developed him a kindness and compassion for others who were also going through difficult times. He could now connect with people on a deeper level and understand their needs and their worries. In the dark season, Joseph lost his sense of self-importance and entitlement. He learned how to humble himself, how to be quiet and listen instead of always shooting off his mouth, talking foolishly, talking arrogantly. Turn to your neighbors and say, he's talking about someone you know. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As a slave, as a prisoner, he learned not to be proud, not to be boastful. I give you first-hand experience. In prison, you want to be boastful, you die. <laughs> but to be sensitive towards the feelings of others. By the time he was given position of power and authority in the palace, Joseph was already a very humble man who always gave God the glory. This humility will help him become a leader people can respect. In the dark season, Joseph learned how to trust in God. Even in his darkest moment, God kept revealing his presence to him, kept elevating him no matter where he was. Joseph learned how to have perfect faith, how to keep on trusting and obeying the Lord, regardless of the outcome. Chevelle is one of our anointed worship leaders. Her dad suffered from throat cancer. In the past nine years, Uncle Eric has gone through three major surgeries, six minor surgeries, three rounds of chemotherapy, 35 sessions of radiotherapy. Each time he thought he beat the disease, then another problem would arise, another problem would arise, another problem would arise. Eventually, his entire throat had to be removed. So now, today, Uncle Eric is unable to eat, to drink with his mouth, or to speak. He can't talk anymore. But Uncle Eric is still full of the joy of the Lord. So he signed up to be a choir member in our Chinese church. How to be a choir member when you cannot sing at all? You can't even talk. He said, it's okay. He wrote down a piece of paper. I just want to encourage a Chinese church with my facial exuberance. So this past week, he was with me at the THN conference in Malaysia. He heard me preach on perfect faith for the first time because he's from a Chinese church. That perfect faith is greater than great faith. That is greater than mountain moving faith because it is the faith of Jesus, a trusting obedience regardless of outcome. On Thursday, I took our Chinese church members for a tour in the old town of Penang. As we were taking photographs, he showed me what he journaled the night before. He wrote, Thank you, Lord, for teaching me perfect faith. I still love you. I still trust you. And I will obey you even if I cannot speak and even if I cannot eat. Thank you for this privilege to learn and develop perfect faith. Wow. He learned that lesson that I have learned. Suffering is a privilege. Boy, I was so touched. I teared when I saw that. 
Dark seasons are necessary for God to perfect our faith in Him. In a dark season, Joseph developed integrity. How to be morally pure. When he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he learned he could say no. Now, to be seduced by her was the greatest temptation of his whole life. According to Jewish tradition, Potiphar's wife was so exceptionally beautiful, men fainted by looking at her. <laughs> she literally took their breath away. <laughs> Yet, Joseph could still say no. Even when all his hormones, his testosterone, and his physical urges were raging. No. He walked away from the temptation. And you know, when you walk away, every time you walk away from a temptation, he was affirming his godliness and strengthening his inner resolve to be pure. <laughs> Hallelujah. This was necessary. Because one day, he's going to be the second in command in Egypt. He must be able to resist all the lust and the immorality that comes with power. God used all those years of hardship to shape and mold Joseph into his likeness. And this is the message of Romans chapter 8. Let us all read Romans 8 and verse 18 together. I want you to read out loud, and the words in bold three times is loud, starting now. I consider that our present sufferings are not, worthy, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Friends, you are the apple of His eye. You are God's top priority. God is more concerned about you than anything else. Turn to your neighbors and say, you are His top priority. Romans 8, 18 says what? God uses your present sufferings, the dark times, to work His glory in you. Look at verse 28. Let's read together, starting now. And we know that in all things, God works for the good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. What is the good that God is working in all of us? Look at the next verse. Verse 29, together. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God uses all your present sufferings, all the dark times, to conform you to the image of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, is using all the challenges you're faced with, you're going through right now, even tonight, to change you, to make you more and more like Christ. The third lesson we can learn from Joseph's story is this. Dark times will last as long as necessary for God to accomplish His purpose. <laughs> it will last as long as necessary for God to accomplish His purpose. God always has a dual purpose. First, to change you because you're His top priority. And then to make you a person of destiny. So first, God wanted to change Joseph's character. And then His plan was to make him the savior of his generation. But to be the savior of a generation, there were so many things Joseph first had to learn. First of all, he had to learn the culture and the language of Egypt. <laughs> he had to speak Egyptian fluently. He got to sound exactly like one of them. He had to know the culture so well, he could integrate into the Egyptian society, understanding the value and the tradition of the people and build relationship with them. Only then, he could earn their respect and become their leader. All these took time. In Joseph's case, 14 years of his life. Can you see? 14 years of slavery and prison in Egypt was absolutely necessary. Joseph learned 
that God has gifted him with certain wisdom and skills. That even on his worst day, in the worst place, those gifts would work. But without working in Potiphar's house and being in prison, he would never have known he was gifted in administration. Because in his own home, everything was done for him. <laughs> everything was catered to him. His family was rich. He was, a, he was spoiled rotten by his dad. He never even need to lift up a little pinky finger to do anything. The dark times activated his gifts. How to administrate. Not just in theory, but actually doing it. So he had the training while administrating in Potiphar's house. He had his training doing administration in the prison, learning how to organize work in a very harsh environment. He learned leadership, especially how power can be abused, like in the case of Potiphar's wife. But it could also be an opportunity like what happened in jail. All these taught him how to be a good, compassionate leader. All those years of twist and turn also taught him patience. So when Joseph had to manage the food supply during the famine, he didn't look for a shortcut, a quick fix. No, he came up with a long-term plan. Guess how long? 14-year plan. 14 years of hardship prepared him to come up with a brilliant 14-year plan. He was able to think and plan strategically because the Holy Spirit had developed in him the fruit of patience and long-suffering. All the unexpected twists and turns also make Joseph very adaptable. He learned how to stay calm and how to stay in faith, even in every bad situation. Let me tell you, strengths like this can only be developed when you have gone through enough pain and dark seasons. By the time the famine came, and destroyed the land. Joseph has stored up enough grain for the whole population. His wise management of the food supply not only saved Egypt, but allowed him to provide for all the countries around Egypt, including his own family, including his brothers who sold him away. God used his sufferings and his struggles as the means to elevate him to a position where you could save the lives of millions. Same thing's gonna happen to you. Same thing's gonna happen to you. Oh, come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Turn your neighbors on your left and right and say, God is gonna use you greatly. Yeah. Do you know the Hebrew people he saved will eventually become the nation of Israel who will one day bring forth the savior of the whole world, Jesus Christ. But Joseph never knew it until the day he died. He couldn't see that his life was bigger than himself. Sometimes you think that your life is wasted. You may go to the grave thinking, I have not accomplished anything much. But 300 years down the road, someone will say, because of you. Look at the revival today. It was for the salvation of the whole world. But until the day he died, Joseph never knew that. Very often, we just want to rush through the dark times. But you must trust God. He created you. He loves you. He doesn't play games with your life. One last time, tell your neighbors and say, God doesn't play games with you. Yeah, with your life, right? All the dark times you're going through, God uses them first to change you. And then, to prepare you for your destiny. Can you imagine Without all the hardships and sufferings, Joseph would have become a very self-exalted, self-righteous man. Feeling entitled, feeling superior, I'm better than others, all will bow down to me. Having an inflated sense of self-confidence that the whole universe revolved around him. And he thought he was already very spiritual. You know, I got visions and dreams. And very close to the Lord when he wasn't. Without the sufferings, Joseph wouldn't fulfill his purpose or his destiny. The truth is, the Holy Spirit changes us more in the dark times than in the good times. 
more. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, the fourth lesson we can learn from Joseph is this. In the darkness, we must walk towards the light. Joseph was always walking towards the light. When he was with his family, he was walking towards the light in visions and dreams. When he was a slave in Potiphar's house, he was still moving towards the light. When he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, he was still moving towards the light. When he was in prison, he was still moving towards the light. When he was forgotten by the chief cup bearer, he was still moving towards the light. By the time he was second in command in the palace, he was already walking in the light as he, God, is in the light. Guys, don't underestimate what God wants to do in your life. No matter how tough or painful your situation is, you keep moving towards the light of God's word towards the light of His Spirit. Persevere. Keep focusing on Him. What is faith? Focus. What is faith? Talk to me. Focus. Focus on God and on His love for you. Focus on the promises in His Word. Like Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I quoted that tonight. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and the future. You focus on that. Tell him, Lord, I believe in your word. I believe, I believe. Spend time in worship, in prayer, in devotion. Even in the darkest moment, God is always leading us to the light. But if you refuse to come to the light, then you will stay in the darkness. How much light does he give you? Very often, let me tell you, enough light just for one step at a time. Very often, it won't be light for the whole year or for one month or even for one day. Just enough light for the next step. <laughs> there will always be just a ray of light just in front of you so that you know exactly where to go next. And it will be enough. That's how I've led you for the last 40 years, 30, 30 over years. One step at a time. The story of Joseph ends in Genesis 50, and this is where we'll end tonight. His brothers came back to him, trembling in fear now because he's in power. They're afraid he's going to take revenge. But he's, he was no longer the self-centered, prideful youngster. Instead, he was now a very kind and loving man of God. Joseph readily forgave them and reassured them everything that has happened was part of God's plan. So let's read the last verse for tonight. Genesis 50. And look at verse 20. I want you to read really loud, okay? From the front to the back, starting now. Verse 20, starting now. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives. 14 long years of pain and anguish and shame and suffering in slavery, in prison, in the midst of very difficult and painful circumstances. Yet to Joseph, it was always not my will, but yours be done. A trusting obedience, regardless of outcome, Developing a perfect faith in God. Many of you are in a dark time tonight. I know it's very painful. I know it's very difficult. I know. I know. I know suffering is not easy. I think on the average, I have suffered just a little bit more than you. But I want to encourage you. God is always with you. Even in your most painful moments, He is using your suffering to change you, to work out His glory in you. Tonight, how many of you want to develop a perfect faith in God? Put up your hands. How many of you want to be able to trust Him even in your worst pain and suffering? Put up your hands. We want a faith like Jesus's that says, not my will, but yours be done. I will always love you. I will always trust you. 
I will always obey. How many of you want to have a perfect faith like Jesus? Put up your hands. Let's all stand on our feet tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you, the presence of God is here tonight. On the eve of our 34th birthday, presence of God is here. You know, 34 years ago, we started by, I tell you, the, the vision is just as fresh. The, the word, the rhema is just as fresh. The calling of God for our lives, for our church is just as fresh. God wants to raise up a new generation that will take the nations by storm. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and just talk in tongues right now. Suturia la carabahateria la carabahateria la carabahateria la carabahateria la carabahateria la carabahateria la for a moment you know this song talks about pouring the oil and the wine in the gospel in the New Testament there are two separate incidents the woman poured the oil and she, her life's totally messed up her life was probably living an unclean life according to tradition and she came to Jesus she was in suffering she was in pain and she said, Lord, 
I give you my life. I give you my all. And history tells us Mary Magdalene goes on or went on to become a mighty, mighty woman of God. God changed her in her sufferings and used her in a great way. Who's the one that poured the wine? Paul. Paul was going to get beheaded by Nero. He was in prison. And then he wrote to Timothy. He said, I know the time of my departure is at hand. I have poured out my life like a wine offering. I pour it all out as a love offering to my Lord. Apart from Jesus, I think most people agree there is no one that impacted the Christian world more than Paul. They didn't have it easy. None of us have life easy. In fact, those that have life easy usually don't do great things for God. And usually they don't become very much like Christ. Tougher your challenge. You must learn to accept it as a privilege. Even if you're in a challenging situation because of your foolishness and your mistake. I mean, Joseph was being foolish. And he kind of got a little bit what he deserved. Although I think the brothers are a little too much wanting to kill him and sell him away. But God allow it. Sometimes when the pain is so great, take it that it's a privilege. God allow you to go through it. He's there with you because He wants to do such a big change. And He wants to put all the things in place because He has a big destiny for you. Don't be afraid of suffering. Don't be afraid of hardship. Paul says, God uses my present suffering to work out His glory in me. So tonight, I want every eye to close and every head to bow. How many of you are going through a challenging time? Tonight, why don't we just pray right now? Why don't we just pray? If you're going through a hard time, a challenging time, we pray that God will give you the grace. We pray for miracles to come. Those of you that are sick in your body, those of you, maybe you're going through mental wellness issue, mental health issue, you're struggling with depression, you're struggling with panic anxiety, Maybe you're here and you're finding a hard time at work. Maybe it's very hard at work. You have financial challenges. Maybe you're out of job. You're in between jobs. Maybe you're going through a heartbreak. Maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe there is a, a grief because somebody you love is no longer in your life. Maybe there was a separation. Maybe there was a misunderstanding. Maybe there's a death. You're coping with a loss. Maybe your, your dreams that you cherish for so many years have been shattered. Maybe your vision and dreams doesn't seem that it will come to pass. But tonight you say, God, I'll put my faith in you. I'll keep on believing. I'll keep on trusting. God, develop within me a perfect faith that I will believe all the way. I will trust you all the way. But not my will, but yours be done, regardless of the outcome. I will love you. I will trust you. I will serve you. How many of you tonight, you want to believe God for such a perfect faith? Just lift up your hands all over this room right now. Hallelujah. Everybody just pray right now. This is what I want to do. I know our time is coming to an end. I won't, I won't drag this service. But tonight, this is an important step that you have to make. All those that are going through a challenging time, they're going through a dark time, whether it's health, physical health, mental health, whether it's in your finances, your job, whether it's in relationship, a heartbreak. You know, maybe you just recently, your, a long romantic relationship had just been broken down or the separation. Maybe you've gone through a painful divorce or on the verge of divorce. Maybe you're going through a challenging time at home. Whatever it is, whatever it is, we're going to sing this song from the beginning again. Tonight, we're not going to lay hands on you, but I want you to come to the front because tonight, I believe God is going to pour a special grace into your life. A grace that will give you just a grace like on Joseph. A grace that I experienced when I've gone through my challenges to give you that special grace, that spirit of faith to go through it in Jesus' name. If that's you, 
When I count to three, I want you to come. One, two, three. Just come to the front. All those that are going through a challenging time, we're going to pray for the special grace to give, to be upon you. Just come wherever you are. Come and stand as close as you can to the front. Just come right now, wherever. Just come all the way to the front, wherever you are. Just come, pastor, just help. Just help usher them all the way to the front. No matter how hard your situation is, there is a special grace. Let me tell you, the end will be better than the beginning. You walk towards the light. You walk towards the light. You walk towards the promises of God. God has something greater than you can ever imagine. Shoot to the Everyone just worship God. If you're in a dark place, just come right now. Special grace from heaven. Just come right now, wherever you are. Whole church, just pray in the spirit right now. Pray for your brothers and sisters in front. They are going through a challenging time. Just focus on God, focus on His love for you.
why don't we just pray? Just pray for all those that are going through a challenging time. If you've got cancer in your body, tonight I'm going to pray for you. Whether you're standing by your seat or here in the front, just put your hands on the part that's sick in your body. If you've got cancer, a tumor, tonight we want to remember Pastor Kim Hong as well. Kim Hong, you, if you're watching right now, put your hands on your liver right now. God can heal liver cancer. Until your very last breath, you're going to trust God and believe God and obey His Word that in the name of Jesus, there is healing. If you got lung cancer, put your hands on your lung right now. If you got breast cancer, put your hand on your chest. If you got prostate cancer, put your hand on your prostate. If you got pancreatic cancer, in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed right now. Put your hands on your abdomen right now, in the name of Jesus. Pancreatic cancer, be healed in the name of Jesus. Tonight, if you've got tumor, wherever your tumor is, inoperable tumor in your brain, in the name of Jesus, be healed in the name of Jesus. Last week, we prayed for two people that have tumor, and both came out benign in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. No cancer in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for you tonight. you got heart disease, put your hands on your heart. If you've got pain in your body, on the cross, He took you and bore your physical pain. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes, be healed in the name of Jesus. You got arthritis in your body. The pain is excruciating. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Tonight we pray for Professor Doug and all of you that glaucoma. Put your hands on your eyes right now. We pray for the pressure to go down. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, glaucoma be healed in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that have mental health issues, you have depression, you have insomnia, you have panic anxiety, you cannot stop panicking in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for healing, healing in your heart, healing from the trauma, healing in your mind. Those of you that are suicidal tonight, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command the spirit of death to go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight, why don't we just, right now, you know, sometimes when we are sick ourselves, when we are struggling, I find that when I pray for other people, for their healing, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So tonight, can we of one heart, we just pray for Pastor Kim Hawk. He's going through a challenging time. He's in pain. You know, and we pray that, uh, you know, he's gone through one round of chemotherapy. His body is very tired. We pray for Pastor Kim Hawk. We pray for Professor Doug. He's coming in a few weeks. We pray for complete healing of his glaucoma. Son, can you just lead us in a prayer for Kim Hawk and for, for Professor Da? Pastor Kim Hawk. Yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh yes, God. Lord. He's your precious son. Lord, each day, oh God, when Kong and I, we pray for him and communicate with him. His faith, oh God, has inspired us. I know that, Lord, even this afternoon, this evening, oh God, he's trusting you. Lord, I bring before you, oh God, his cancer, his liver cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's nothing that you cannot do. Oh Lord, we stand together in faith as a church. You say, ask and it shall be given. Knock at the door and it will be opened for you. Seek and you will find. I know, oh God, and Kim Hong is seeking for his healing, believing for his healing. So we seek together with him. We ask together with him. We knock at your door together with him. Be healed in Jesus' name, Kim Hong. Be healed in Jesus' name. And we pray for Professor Doug. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you bring that digit, oh God. So a single digit in his glaucoma situation. Let his eyes, oh God, be able to see. Let his eyes be so strong, let his vision be so clear. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, let it be done in your power, in your name. Truly, there's no other name that is greater than your name. There's no other power that is stronger than your power. Jesus, we bow our knees and confess, you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords.
for those of you that are standing in front of have come forward that the Lord wants to say to you fear not yes. Isaiah 41 the scriptures that we know so well fear not for I am with you yes. when we're in darkness yes. sometimes it feels like we can't see anything but if you have paid attention during the sermon just now even our darkness is light unto God. Yes. He is the light yes. that will shine through yes. in your darkness. Fear not. God say, for I am with you. Yes. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes. Even as we sung the song and said His love is for us, truly, He loves you. And this evening, He wants to remind you, I am your personal God. I'm not just a God of City Harvest Church. I am your God. I am your God. I am your God. Whatever situation you are in, I am your God. And yes, I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You will not fumble. You will not fall. You just trust me. Hold on to me. And I will not let loose on my hold on you, my children. My child, my daughter, and my son. Fear not. Fear not. For your darkness shall be even light in my sight. Shikarama kirianda la bakaria rabahari. Kirianda la bakaria rabahari rabahari. Just love him tonight. One last prayer we're going to pray. Joseph always released forgiveness. He had to learn to forgive his brothers. He had to learn to forgive Potiphar's wife. He had to learn to forgive the cupbearer. He had to learn to forgive the system. He got to learn to forgive the slavery trade that was going. He got to forgive everyone. He came to a point that he's just filled with the love of God. God is love. God is forgiveness. The faster we learn to forgive, the quicker God comes into our darkness to light up our darkness. So I want you to close your eyes right now. Whoever hurt you, whoever caused you to be in this darkness, whoever caused you to be in this predicament, forgive. It could be a business partner. It could be a close friend who betrayed you. It could be a lover. It could be an ex-husband, an ex-wife could be your present spouse could be people at home that abuse you maybe it's even you yourself you need to forgive yourself I want you to forgive let's all say this prayer together right now everybody from the front all the way to the last row close your eyes say this say dear heavenly father dear heavenly father Tonight I'm walking towards the light. Tonight I'm walking towards the light. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I release forgiveness. I release forgiveness. Will you just forgive the person? Just mention the person. Lord, I just forgive right now. So pray in tongues over that person right now. It could be yourself. Just pray in tongues. I forgive. 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 Say, dear Lord. Wash my heart clean. Wash my heart clean. With the precious blood of Jesus. With the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I shall be. I shall be. The head and not the tail. The head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Above and not beneath. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My healing is coming. My healing is coming. I will live a healthy life. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, provide for me. Provide for me. Help me get out of debt. Help me get out of debt. Help me live in abundance. Help me live in abundance. Most of all, Most of all 
Change me. Change me. To be kind. To be kind. Patient. Patience. Humble. Humble. Loving. Loving. Gentle. Gentle. Change me. To be more like you, to be more like you. Through, the through the darkness. Lift up both hands and talk in tongues right now. Just tell the Lord right now. Just tell the Lord you mean it from the front to the back. Show that. Come on, people in the church, don't be tired. Lift up your hands all the way in the last row. Just reach out to the Lord right now. That's right, just will love Him, just worship Him. Suduria la carabaha deria 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 Suduria la carabaha deria 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 Suduria la carabaha deria la carabaha Suduria la carabaha you in the everlasting love Romans 5 verse 5 he poured his Holy Spirit and he poured his love into you when you have the Holy Spirit in you you have the source of love Let's enjoy that love he loves you you are his top priority. Just receive that love. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight that your grace is always sufficient. We pour our wine, we pour our oil at your feet as an expression of our love for you that in good times and bad times you hold us close your first priority is us we are your priority you want to draw us so close to you to enjoy your love so close into your divine embrace so that we are changed more and more into your image and your likeness. That is the whole purpose of why you even save us. And out of that, you give us a great destiny that we can't even imagine. Tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, we give you full permission Come and change us. Come and work that destiny, that glory out of us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Let's just give God a big hand right now. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's try to give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. 
His grace is upon you. His grace is upon us. No darkness is too great for God. You're going through the darkness. His rod and His staff will comfort you. You'll come through it victoriously. You'll come through it change like Joseph. You'll come through it and be a world shaker, a history maker, a person of destiny. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Our time is gone. But, to, but what did Joseph do? The last thing. He loved his brothers. Loving people. Tonight, before you go, can you just find some people that you know, let me sell group members, that sell group leaders, your pastors, someone you know, and just, to, it's the eve of our anniversary anyway. Just go ahead and give them a hug. Brothers give brothers a hug. Sisters give sisters a hug. Say, I really love you in the Lord. Just, will you just do that? Just release that love. Just release that love. Release that love. Go and find your friends. Go and find your family. Go and find your wife. Find your husband. Release that love. God bless you. Service over. Fellowship just begun. <laughs>